I want you to, to think about a question to begin my time with you for a little bit. Is there something that you have that you basically aren't willing to part with and it really doesn't make sense to other people in your life why you're not willing to part with it? Do you have something that you're thinking? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Nobody's going to have to stand up and testify to what their thing is, but it's only fair. I wouldn't ask that question if I didn't have some example in my own life, so I'm going to tear back the veil and let you into my world a little bit. My thing that comes to mind is, is a, it's a dumb, trivial little thing, but what it is, it's a ball cap. It's a hat. Uh, I went to Florida State, and before I went there for school, I went down there to Tallahassee one summer for a music camp, ended up going there studying music and all that, but while I was there, kind of fell in love with the place, bought a garnet and gold hat, and brought it back with me and started wearing it proudly, and, and as I think back about it, that hat over the years went to countless sweaty Saturday afternoon Tallahassee games, that hat went to games in Gainesville and Miami, that hat went to Baton Rouge and Clemson, South Carolina. That hat went to a sugar bowl, an orange bowl, and a cotton bowl. Uh, that hat since college has been part of mission trips. That hat has gone out of the country numerous times. That hat is now a part of my yard work ritual. It's like I can't mow the grass unless I have my hat on. And I'm sort of proud to say that unless I've forgotten something, that hat has never been washed. It's not exactly garnet and gold anymore. Every time we've moved, we go through the process, and now the hat lives in the garage. You can imagine that it does, it's not allowed inside the house. Uh, every time we get to move and we're packing up things, and Erica will pass it, and she'll see, and she'll kind of go, you or we're unpacking, that's where it's, where it's worse, and, and she'll look at it and go, you really? Not time to throw that away yet? And I sort of go, no, are you kidding? That's blasphemous. Of course not. I'm hanging. I may be buried with this hat on. Doesn't make any sense to her. Doesn't really make much sense to me. It's not something that's enriching my life. It brings back some memories, I guess. But those memories are there regardless of the hat. But boy, I like to hang on to that thing. And that's kind of an entry point into where we're going to be in the scripture this morning. The ways that we sometimes hang on to old things uh, and we don't allow a new thing to come in and change our lives. Our scripture is from 2 Corinthians, a letter to the Corinthian church. Uh, and we're going to read together. This is from chapter 5. It says this, So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we must make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. And then it skips ahead a few verses to 14. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, talking about Jesus, of course. He died for all, so that those who might live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for him. Now listen to this part. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Everything has become new. It's interesting in, in this scripture, and so often in the teachings of Jesus himself, it, it draws us out of places that are comfortable to us and natural. And Paul, I think, needs to remind the Corinthians, as he reminds us this morning, to maybe allow ourselves to do something unnatural. To take our hopes and our dreams and our wishes off of the things that we see around us and place them on something that's bigger, that's grander, that's eternal. To let go of an old thing and embrace a new creation that only God can do in us. And, and it occurs to me, as Paul teaches us, and as Jesus taught us, 
you don't really need to teach people things that they just do naturally, do you? Let me give you an idea. I, Kale, I just need you this. I'm sorry, I'm going to pick on you all the Stevens this morning. I, I've been watching you. I, I need you to breathe. Okay, now, in, okay, and back out, exhale, and breathe in. But aren't you glad that I taught you? Because otherwise you would have forgotten. I mean, they, they might have passed out. Um, of course not. Silly example. We do that naturally, right? You didn't need my reminder or coaching to breathe as you sat there, did you? Everybody on the back row this morning, I need you, don't forget to blink. Uh, and I'll show you how your eyes close and then you open them back and occasionally just sort of, I don't need to teach you to do that, do I? You don't need any coaching because it's something you're predisposed to, maybe by motor, just or your body naturally does it, uh, reflexes and everything that we do. There are things that we do naturally that we need no coaching in. In fact, if you think about it, we turn those things into games. Have you ever played a game where you saw who could hold their breath the longest? Where you turn it into a game, something that you do naturally. Have you ever had a staring contest? We're not going to have one now. That would be really weird. We turn those into games. There are just things that we do that we let ourselves slip into naturally. And now, talking about physical things, but shift to, to your soul life, your inner life, your spiritual nature. Are there things that you do that you just feel are natural and you're predisposed to them, but if you take a step back and you look, you know that's not the healthiest thing for me. There are things that I let myself drift into, attitudes and behaviors and speech that aren't the best, but it just is who I am and it feels natural. Well, maybe it's to those part of your, parts of your life that we need that coaching for Paul to say, the old has gone. Look, everything is a new creation. Be new, be different. Let go of something to let God grow something new. But so often we're scared to do that. And so we hang on. And we don't let go, even though we know it may not be the healthiest thing. I remember when I was in seminary, I did a project uh, in a Christian ethics class. And the, the topic of the project was the church's role in the lives of people who have suffered for, from domestic abuse and violence. And as part of that research, I read countless interviews of survivors of domestic abuse and violence. And essentially, to the person, there were commonalities. And one of those commonalities, people would ask them, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you just leave? And the response was almost always the same. I was too scared to leave because I didn't know what I would do. The unknown was so gripping and terrifying that they couldn't release themselves from violence and abuse. And so they allowed themselves to normalize this horrible thing, this unhealthy thing. They knew it wasn't good for them, but the prospect of leaving and doing something new was more terrifying than the relative, and I put in quotes, comfort of staying with an abuser. Are there things in our lives that have an impact of abusing us spiritually. Things that you know sitting in here this morning are just not good for you. And yet, we hold on. You might even say we hoard them. We let them become such a part of us that, that we don't mind walking around them because that's normal. We don't mind tripping over them because we just keep them in our lives and we add to and we add to the stack and we add to the behaviors and we add to the attitudes and eventually people might question it. Is that really who you are? It's just who I am. God is calling us to something different. And, and, you know, you, you get an idea of those things we hang on to. Some of us, it may be uh, behaviors, maybe actions. You know, are, are you a person who is prone to fits of rage and anger? Uh, do you lean into jealousy and bitterness? Uh, are you one of those people who has so much else going on in your life and your soul and your spirit that you let someone cutting you off in traffic derail your entire day? It's an easy one to pick on, but do you know people that just let obscenities and expletives flow from their mouth as easy as breathing? 
It's not the healthiest way of speaking, is it? It's typically not, not the most endearing or productive, but folks just settle into a way of speaking or a way of being or a way of thinking. Do you fall to the trap of thinking that you've got to have more or you've got to have what they have or you've got to have what's being advertised as the newest, the shiniest, the best, the this, the that? If you didn't go to vacation out of the country this year, then you're really not, a, you're, you're subpar. Do you buy into that kind of stuff? speeches and actions and attitudes and and behaviors and things that we just let trap us and we hoard those things and we let them become normal in our lives like that's just what everybody does right well paul says no if you're in christ there's a new creation imagine every time that you hold on to one of those things that isn't your best self isn't who god wants you to be it's like planting a seed in the soil and then planting your hard boot on top of it It wants to grow, it wants to sprout, but we keep it from happening sometimes. And we sometimes even embrace that it doesn't happen. uh, Our family's vacation a few weeks back, we flew in and out of Las Vegas, first time being there, and uh, we did a lot of trips in other places, and we came back through, spent one night in Las Vegas on our way on out between Utah and California. And uh, it's an interesting place to visit. (laughs) Um, it's an interesting place to visit. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I hope you can separate this, because I had a view of it, and it, not necessarily because of my vocation. You know, I, didn't, I didn't put on a preacher's robe and walk the strip. You know, I wasn't condemning people. Sinners! Sinners! Evil! You know. Um, but I just was observing, and being in that place for the first time, and... Uh, and we, did, we walked the strip some, and we went to Fremont Street for a while and all. And, but I came away from that place feeling like, gosh, I'm sad. Because of all the places that I've ever walked in, that place felt to me like the, the biggest temple to self that I've ever been in. Like everywhere you turn, it is a lifting up of all of those parts of us that we allow to be comfortable that don't draw us toward God. I mean, it seems like it's just excess everywhere. It's sexuality everywhere. It's you could strike it rich. It's you can have this amazing experience. Feed yourself, feed yourself, feed yourself, feed yourself, because that's all that really matters. And by the way, you can come here and feed it and feed it and feed it. And what happens here does what? Stays in Vegas. So you don't even have to have guilt and shame when you leave this place, right? It just struck me as what an odd place where there are all these edifices to the self, really, self-indulgence. And we hang on to those things. And it's not who we're supposed to, it's not our best self. It's not who God wants, it's not who God created you to be. And we hang on. Well, Paul reminds us that there is an opportunity to do something different and to be something different, to let go. But he also, he says in the scripture, I don't know if you noticed it, that he says, while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. So it's this idea that if we get too used to the stuff around us, if we fall into the normalcy of, well, I'm just an angry person, or, well, I'm just prone to jealousy and bitterness. Well, I don't know, it just, that sometimes happens. If we normalize that, we are away from the Lord. Those things keep us from the new creation that God wants to do in us. And so, what do we do? Like, it strikes me if I'm asking the question, am I too at home in the body? Am I too at home in this place? What, is there a litmus test? Don't you wish that, like, you could carry around something or have an app on your watch or your phone that when you were too at home in the body, it would send you a notification? Wouldn't that be great? If there were push notifications for, uh, like, humanity and temptation, that'd be awesome. Oh, shoot, this is one of those moments. We don't have that. So I have to think in terms of, well, then what do we have? And, and three simple questions for me that kind of draw me there, ways of assessing yourself that I just want to, to ask you in terms of, do you allow yourself to get too at home in the body? First thing I would ask is, uh, on what do you spend your energy? Now that's mental energy, physical energy, emotional energy. Are you spending that energy on things that are good and uplifting and positive and hopeful or not 
And if not, it may mean that you're letting yourself slip into being pretty used to and comfortable in this world that says, no, it's okay to get mad. Fly off the handle. Yell at people. No big deal. Cuss them out. Sure, they deserve it. It's a slippery slope. Being too at home in the body. What about your time? On what do you spend your time? Or on whom do you spend your time? Is it all about getting stuff for you? Tending to your needs? Do you give your time away? Do you pay attention to the value of time? And then it's an easy one, but it's so true. On what do you spend your money? Your resources? Are you investing in things that have a value beyond this world? Because Paul says when you're in Christ, you see things in a whole new way. Your perspective changes. The old is gone and new comes. So are are you using your energy and your time and your resources and your money on new things that God is doing in your life or might want to do? On people that matter? Would you ever consider, oh, this is bold and crazy, Would you ever consider walking up to our youth pastors and saying, I think I might want to go on the mission trip next year? Or does that mortify you, you know? How are we investing? And that can be kind of a barometer of how comfortable we've allowed ourselves to get in this body. Because as long as we're comfortable in the body, Paul says, we're away from the Lord. And that's not how we're made to be. So, so then what do you do? It's fair to ask. Well, Brad, if we're not supposed to be at, at home in the body, we're supposed to be with the Lord. How do we do that? And, and I got to thinking about that. About that and there was something real simple that came to mind. Part of the work of the church is to provide all of us entry points into the new creation that God wants to do in us. And, and I thought, you don't have to look. Did you get a bulletin this morning as you walked in? Rattle it around for me. Let me hear the bulletins. Thank you for humoring me, okay? If you didn't, grab one on your way out. Here's why. This isn't just a piece of paper, and you may not have ever thought of it this way. This is, in many ways, a guidebook into spiritual disciplines that will help to keep you grounded in the eternal rather than becoming too comfortable in your body, in the stuff around us, in the world around you. Let me give you an idea. You walked in, you just rattled it. That means you were in worship. That's a good thing. That means you are present in a place of a group of people trying to find a connection with God that is bigger than them. If you open up the bulletin, you see on the top left, August 12th, get your can to church. We want you to be in worship, but we also want you to bring a can that's going to go to North Fulton Community Charities to give away. It helps you be more grounded and connected to God when we learn to give ourselves away. That that whole left page is all about studying the scripture together with other believers and growing. Those are all spiritual disciplines. The back has the financial stuff. That's not just about dollars and cents. That's in some ways a barometer of are we growing spiritually to where we're giving ourselves away? Sometimes of the stuff that's hardest to give away. This is like a field guide (laughs) to spiritual disciplines. There's even a place to offer prayer requests, knowing that people will be praying for those. Are you trying to stay grounded in God so that you don't get too comfortable in your body? It may not feel comfortable, and maybe that's a good thing. Um, As we continue on these last couple of minutes in here, you you got the card, and it's got on the top, got junk. And and as we're talking about this, I I do want to turn your attention to thinking about, uh, are there things in your mind that you know that if God were standing in front of you right now, you would say, I keep holding on to some stuff that doesn't bring me any closer to you. Uh, There's guilt and shame that's 30 years old that I haven't been able to let go of. And that's keeping something new from growing in me, God. I know that. God, I don't want to be angry with my kids so much of the time, but it seems like I just can't help it. (sighs) That's junk. (laughs) Do you have things that come to your mind that you know, you know what, if I were to be truly faithful, I need to let that go and let God create something new because that stuff is hindering new creation in me. Y'all are familiar with the show Hoarders? 
seen or heard about, at least know what it's about, and it's about groups of people that come in, and, and there's physical hoarding of things in these folks' lives, and it's a reality show where it kind of coaches them through letting go of some of that. And uh, this morning kind of has that same idea in a spiritual sense. I, I want you to watch, it's about a minute long video, it's the daughter of a lady that went through that show, and this is years later, but she's reflecting back on what that meant to her mom, and and even though she's talking about letting go of spiritual things, I want you to listen for it in a spiritual context. She's, she's letting go of material things. Listen for it in a spiritual context. Some of the before and after images, what would parts of your soul look like if that thing that's cluttering it up and keeping it just all junked up, if, it, if, you, were, if you let go of it, could there be new and fresh and different? Would it be reason for celebration if you were to let go? Watch the video this show don't look at the whole experience as a source of entertainment hoarding is a real disorder that takes a lot of work and a lot of courage for people to step up and deal with and accept and it is real and it can be maintained after the show left my mom was given six months with a personal organizer and one year of therapy and it was wonderful and she was on cloud nine. I'd come over that day at the end of the day and go, what'd you guys work on today, mom? And oh, honey, look what I did and look what I did. It's been almost six years and she's still, she'll call me on the phone and she'll go, I went to Kmart and I got this jewelry chest. It was only $4 and I brought it home and I organized all my jewelry and you know, laughs and gets tickled pink about it. So it impacted her positively. My experience going through all of this has been tremendously gratifying. It feels so good to look at the before and after. It makes you feel like such a good person inside to know that you have helped someone change their life. If I came in, in front of a room of 100 people in one sentence that I had said had changed one person in that audience, it was successful. I hope if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Behold the old has gone and the new has come. Uh, an important step in that show is to identify the things that need to go. And so you've got cards in front of you. Stephanie's going to play a little bit. You've got pins in the pews and the seat backs. And, and bet just between you and God, completely, if there's something that's come to your mind that you know that's something old, that if I'm going to let God do something new in me, I've got to let that go, then I want you to explore and search your own soul a little bit and write it down here. Give some time to identify the jump. 